Hi, so I've made some uh, changes to my printer and I want to show you my progress. So, as you can see, I've uh, removed the induction probe from here and built uh, a clicky probe, basically uh, an end stop with a servo because I want to use uh, different surfaces that don't have uh, metal in them like uh, mirrors or plexiglass or different types of plastics. Uh, one change I did to be able to use this, I added this DC to DC converter here that takes 24 volts and converts it to 5 volts. So it powers the servo. The servo requires plus uh, 5 volts, 0 and signal. So I just added this connector here and uh, one wire underneath for GPO2 I think. One of these. I posted in the community on YouTube, you can see the schematic. Alright, I also moved my last stepper one place back for the extruder because that was unused. I think that's all the changes I did here. Uh, okay, I I I, uh, I switched this because it was the other way around. The the print head was on the other side. I decided to put it in front because it's easier to work on it and check stuff. Uh, this uh, loop of wire is not pretty, but for now it's just uh, connected to this Bowden tube. Also, I I. I switch the position of this extruder to be easier to work on it. Okay, so I think these are the main changes. Okay, let me talk about uh, this uh, end stop. So basically, my connector is just uh, one piece of this L metal used for wood. It has two holes here. You just take one uh, a 10 millimeter drill bit and enlarge one of the holes so it connects here and then one piece of wood that has all right so it's connected by two screws the reason you have you see this ugly wood screw here is because my cut of the plexiglass it's uneven so you see it's not a straight line because i cut it by hand and uh, you might be able to see here the nut fitted but uh, the other nut here didn't fit so I just used one of these uh, screws because they have a smaller head the other one is just uh, with a nut here and on a bit to the left I connected the stepper with two screws one here and one in the bottom that are connected with nuts here so that's why I made it. Uh, the only thing that flexes a bit it's you see it's this piece is the so here the part of the plastic that comes with the motor. So I need to replace this. I will show you how it works. Uh, the reason you see this piece of plastic it's two piece it's cut from a credit card. It's because uh, you see this piece of wood. It's actually the Mm, from let me see if I can zoom it's uh, this part from here the part I cut from here so it's this one and I tried to cut uh, an L like this and because this was too thin it broke so I just uh, fix it like this <laughs> Ideally it would be in one piece but uh, one thing I noticed now because this, this piece of plastic flexes you see, I thought this will flex, but actually this is quite sturdy. Uh, I think it's better if I just uh, drill a hole through this. Well, actually better made the, make one other piece of wood like this. Or 3D print if you want. I'll make uh, steels for all the pieces after I finish. Everything works fine. But for now I, I want to do it uh, in do-it-yourself style. So everybody who wants to build a reliable 3d printer can do it without having to another 3d print to print the parts 
Okay, so I'm thinking of just drilling a hole through here and put it in a screw because these splinters are not needed. There's no much tension on it to move it sideways. Okay, this is how I build this. Let me show you how it works now. So I have clipper here. I will click on home all axis. So this is the X, this is the Y, and the Z. Uh, I want a few more things I did, I forgot. I, I put the X on this, so it's how it's supposed to be, and the Y on this. And um, this was on the top here, so I moved it to the side, because the, the plexiglass was hitting it, so now I can move much more in this side. Uh, and also the magnet, you can see it was put on a screw in that hole. I just taped it with some double tape, like this, and it stays, stays quite fine. Okay, so I did the homing. Now, let me show you also. This is how I lift the servo. When the print starts, I still need to figure a bit the config how to do this automatically, maybe a macro or something. All right, and when I put it back down to 180 degrees, uh, okay, and now I'm gonna do a height map again, calibrate. Okay, let me focus again. Another thing, because I, I moved the head uh, front, I lost a bit of space, so I need to probably move this beam a bit further, because I lost a bit of printing space. Okay, here's the result. So we have a 0.5 millimeter uh, incline of this. Let me show you why and what I'm gonna do for it. Let's lift first the ZX. Okay, so uh, the problem is uh, this part of the wood here. It's plywood from this desk actually. And it's not, it's not uh, flat, of course, because it's wood and uh, I also sp spilled some maybe liquids on it, so it and let me see if I can show you. You see, if I press on here, it moves. So from here, it's that movement you can see. All right, so. I don't know if you can see, but it is not because it's very small torrents, zero half millimeter, so it's hard to see with the naked eye, but uh, this piece of wood, of course, is not very straight, so I'm thinking of, um, uh, in the next video, replacing this with something more straight. Maybe I don't, I will not need to uh, use this. I also have uh, a set of these springs that I was thinking initially of you see I had these holes, maybe put them and adjust it from here, but uh, I want to try something better than this wood, well, anyway, we'll see. Uh, this is all for now, hope you enjoyed how my project is going, like and subscribe if you want to see more.